Hello and welcome to Let's Play Siberia. This is a point-and-click adventure game released by Microids in 2002. It was also the second game created by Belgian comic book artist Benoit Sokal. I hope I pronounced that right. It was made at a time when adventure games were on their last legs, and many consider this to be one of the last great examples of the genre before its eventual death, at least before it would make a comeback later on. Now, this is usually where I would say, let's find out how great it is, or something, and start the game. But I'm going to break this format to tell you that while I like this game, otherwise I wouldn't be playing it, let's just say I have opinions about it. There are a number of things in this game that uh, irk me, and I will be talking about them, so expect some complaints, at least, and at least one major rant at one point in the game. I know that not everybody likes it when I complain about a game um, while I'm playing it, and for that reason I usually leave that until the review at the end nowadays. But with this game, I'm not gonna do that. I will be talking about this game's bad points as I encounter them, so if you're one of the people who don't like me talking about that, maybe this Let's Play isn't for you. Don't worry though, it will be far from all negative. One other thing, Siberia is the first of three games, and normally I tend to commit to doing the whole series. In this case, however, I'll probably do the second one, but Siberia 3 is unlikely, as it's really quite awful in my opinion. <laughs> okay, with that in mind, we can get started. Okay, that introduction did not tell us very much. Didn't even tell us who we are. We are this person, apparently. And it looks like we arrived in a hotel, I guess. After witnessing what I had to say is the strangest funeral procession I have ever seen. At least I think it was a funeral procession. It was a procession of some kind. Um, well, let's see. Where are we? Like I said, it looks like the lobby of a hotel. And we have a suitcase, so I'm assuming we'll be staying here. I really don't have the strength to take this suitcase any further. I wonder who can help me. And that means that um, we just got a, a new topic of conversation. There isn't an awful lot to look at in this room, or in this game in general. So I guess we should just try and uh, get help, which I'm assuming means we need to call somebody at the front desk. Um, okay. Surely, um, it would have been easier to just have a bell that I could ring manually. I need a key. But I guess, uh, this place seems very obsessed with these 
mechanical figures. We saw them in the procession, we saw them on the roof outside, and now there's here one for the bell as well. And we need a key, not those keys, I presume those are room keys. But there is what looks like a wind-up key right here. There's also a button, which does nothing, presumably because we need to wind it up. Right-clicking opens our inventory. So now we have a reception bell key. And hopefully that'll work now. Okay, okay, I'm coming. All right, that seems to have worked. Hi there. Hello there, ma'am. Uh, it looks like we can tell um, him about a person called Kate. Presumably that's us. And we can ask him for help, which is the extra topic we just got by... Um, um, by clicking on the suitcase. There's also somebody sitting in that corner, which is interesting. I would like a room. My company should have made a reservation in the name of Walker. The company is Marson and Lormont Associates. The name is Kate Walker. Of course, Miss Walker. You are in room six on the next floor up. Thank you. All right. I guess we are in room six, and our name is Kate Walker. Good to know. Could you possibly take my luggage up, please? Please do excuse me, Miss Walker. We have been neglecting our duties. Guests are so rare these days that we forget our manners. So you're the American woman? Is it true what people say? That you've come to buy the factory? Not factory. Anna's house. Hans' house. Excuse me? Would you quiet down, you mischievous little boy? Ah. Oh. I imagine our little town must disappoint you. You see, today is very sad for us. It's a day of mourning. Today is the funeral of Miss Anna. Momo sad, but Hans not dead. Hans long way away. Anna told Momo. Anna liked Momo very much. That's enough, Momo. Stop pestering the lady. Now go on, scram. Get out of here, you hear? What was I saying? Oh yes, Miss Anna. Such a great loss for Valle de Laine, it really is. Because now that she's dead, the factory will close. But you're here to stop that happening, aren't you? Our future is in your hands, Miss Walker. What? Anna Varlberg is dead? That's how I walk upstairs. Here's your room. I hope you like it, Miss Walker. I'll leave you to rest for the time being. You must have a lot of work to do. You know, the takeover of the factory is very good news for us here. It would make us very happy to see life return to our valley. If only you had seen Valadilen before. It was delightful. People came from all over the world to buy Vorlberg automatons. Ah, somebody has left you some mail, I see. Remember, if you need anything at all, we're not far away, Miss Walker. Oh, somebody left us some mail before we were even in this room? And we got another conversation topic. No telling what that is. I... Yeah, you can actually see your the topics that you have without needing to talk to someone. So right now we can talk about ourselves, about help, about this person named Hans that we heard about. Momo, who I guess is the kid downstairs, automatons, and Anna. So it seems that we are here to buy some factory that created automatons, which I guess is those uh, mechanical things we saw walking around. That's pretty impressive, I have to say. 
And um, presumably it's not us personally that's buying the factory. We were here for in for some company, so I guess we're representing them. All right, we're in our room now. Looks like a cozy room. I do hope it has a window. We cannot see from this angle. I don't think we can get an angle where we uh, can see. But since we can hear the rain, I'm assuming um, it does. Um, let's see our suitcase. I don't need that for the time being. Which I guess she does not need. And somebody left us some mail. Oh, that just walked to the other screen. I still need to click on it. It is a fax. Because this was 2002. People still use those. I mean, I guess people still do those. They'll uh, still do use faxes, but uh, not very common anymore. From uh, Martian and Lormont Associates Law Practice, 51 West 50th Street, New York, New York, 10023-12458-902. That, that does not look like a phone number to me, but sure. Anyway, this fax was addressed um, to us, Kate Walker, from Edward Marson, one of the uh, owners, I guess. Dear Kate, our client, the Universal Toy Company, is more than eager to see conclusions from the talks with Vorlberg Manufacturing with view to a takeover in the days to come, and we have received notification to this effect. We're counting on your undoubted qualities as a business lawyer to bring negotiations with Madame Anna Vorlberg, the current owner, to a close. Allow me to remind you that the Universal Toy Company is a multinational which has a monopoly on the toy market. It is a Class A priority client, who is also representing Madame Vorlberg with a golden, also presenting Madame Vorlberg with a golden opportunity to sell her factory. You should remind her of this fact in case she starts having last-minute second thoughts before signing the purchase agreement. I am under no doubt that you will live up to the great expectations I have in you, Edward Marson. Okay, so we're a lawyer for this company, here to uh, negotiate the uh, purchase of the factory. But it, I think Anna Vorlberg is dead from what we just heard, so that might throw a kink uh, in the proceedings. Um, apparently it's April 17th. That is not important. I should tell Marson about the death of Miss Vorlberg. I hope this isn't going to get too complicated. I can't see myself staying here too long. Nah, I'm sure it'll be easy. This game is going to be like five minutes. Um, yes, we should tell Marson, and for that we can use our cell phone. It's 2002, so pre-smartphone era. And while you might, while you might be tempted to try the uh, number that's on the, the paper, you can actually just... Uh, use the arrows to go through the memory recall. And this is, in fact, the same number. We can also call Mom, someone called Olivia, someone called Dan, and that's all the people she has in her phone. Let's call the office. Martin and Lamont, how can I help you? Can you put me through to Mr. Marson, please? It's Kate Walker. Hold the line, please. Hello, Kate. So tell me, how's the case going? I've just got to Valadie Lynn, and there's a slight problem, Mr. Marson, I'm afraid. Mrs. Vorlberg is dead. Ah, that's most unfortunate. But I seem to remember we made provisions for just such a sad eventuality, and we know that there was no heir. Yes. That's right, but... So where's the problem, Kate? Contact the notary right away. I'll get my secretary to fax you his address and an introduction letter from the firm. Very good, Mr. Marson. Right. I gotta go, Kate. Keep me up to date, okay? I just... 
Okay, well, he's not very helpful. I guess we should just go find a notary. Can we call someone else? Tell our mom we've arrived safely. The answer is no. Pretty sure they all are going to give that result right now. Yeah. Well, only one more to try, so might as well. Dan Foster isn't around to take your call right now, so please leave your message after the tone. And she did not leave a message. You can also dial numbers yourself, which we may have to do on occasion. Can we, like... This should work, right? 112? European emergency number? Darn it! It does not. That would be a problem in real life. Would be kind of funny if they would have thought of that, but actually was 112 the emergency number in France in, in 2002? I don't know when that they started using that in Europe because I know the ones in the Netherlands used to be different but um, that's a while ago anyway I guess this is our bathroom no need to go down there and I guess Kate does not need to go the weird light fixtures it is like my um, habit to just go over the screen to see if I can look at things, but there's very rarely anything you can look at in this uh, game. Which is one of the things I don't like. I guess we're done here. And uh, I, as far as I know, we actually never come back here, so... That's a thing. Um... There's another door here. No need to go down there. And this game lets you click on almost every door, regardless of whether or not you can go in there. It's kind of a time waster. There's nowhere else we can go here, other than downstairs. We got a bunch of new conversation topics, so... Let's talk to um, the hotel clerk about that. We actually do um, need to ask him about the uh, facts that Mr. Marson was sending us. I'm back again. Miss Walker? At least he's there now. We don't have to hit the bell again. A fax didn't arrive for me, did it? Maybe. I thought I heard the phone ring. Do you think you might want to go and check? Certainly, ma'am. Immediately. Thank you very much. <laughs> Apparently, uh, checking just involved looking under the desk. I thought he would might have had to go to, in, uh, to the back or something, but... Not very hard. Okay, we, this fax is actually to uh, Matra Alfolte. I'm assuming that's what that says. Um, who I guess is the uh, notary. Dear Matra Alfolte, as you are no doubt aware, our practice is charged with undertaking negotiations for the takeover of the Vorlberg Manufacturing by our client, the Universal Toy Company. It is with great sadness that we learn of the recent death of the manager and owner of the factory. Madame Vorlberg, with whom negotiations had started. We are under no doubt that Madame Vorlberg left you instructions before her death, establishing, enabling this sale to be concluded. We should remind you of the significant boost the arrival of the American multinational would bring to the economy of your region. It is for this reason that I am sure you will give our representative, Miss Kate Walker, a warm welcome. Yours faithfully, Edward Marson. Okay, hopefully that will work. 
Thank you. At your service. The game does not indicate um, what you've talked about before. Um, if you talk about it again... Hello, my name is Kate Walker and... Of course, of course. Walker, room six, next floor up. They usually um, just serve as a reminder of what you talked before rather than just repeating the whole thing, which is kind of nice. I don't know if help does anything else now. I think I'm going to need your help again. Are you leaving already, Miss Walker? Should we bring down your luggage? No, no, I'm not leaving yet. It's just that... We would love to help, but just think what would happen if the telephone rang, or, or if a fax arrived, or if a customer came through the door. We don't have five minutes rest here. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. No biggie. Just despite the fact that we seem to be the only customer here, but, you know. I guess we can't ask him for help with anything else we want to maybe do. Let's ask him about um, Hans, the uh, other person that Momo was talking about, who seems to be connected to Anna Vorlberg. The young boy who was here earlier talked about uh, uh, Hans. Uh, who is Hans? Uh, Momo was talking about Hans Vorlberg, Anna's younger brother. But he died a long time ago. Nobody here even met him. Um... That is not what Momo said. He said that Hans was not dead. Who is the boy who was drawing here earlier? Is he your son? Heaven forbid. No, no, not at all. <laughs> He's not a bad boy. No, Momo is just a little simple, that's all. What is his connection with Anna Varlberg? Momo is what you'd call the village idiot, and Anna took him under her wing. He must have reminded her of her younger brother, no doubt. And uh, birds of a feather stick together, don't they? You're implying that Anna Varlberg was a little bit slow as well? Heaven forbid. No, no, not at all. She was a real loner. She kept to herself. That's all. Something tells me that the waiter treating... Uh... Momo and Hans as well in this game would not fly if this game were made today. The way they're talking about them. I just love all these little mechanical robots. I've noticed there are tons of them here in Valadilen. Be careful what you say. Vorlberg automatons are not robots. If you want people to like you here, never ever pronounce the word robot. Uh, okay. Uh, what is the difference between an automaton and a robot, then? <laughs> uh, well, to tell you the truth, no one really knows. Okay. That's helpful. Did you know Anna Varlberg yourself? Oh, why, of course I did. I, I mean, well, not really. She was a very great lady. We loved her very much. May she rest in peace. All right. I'm going to go look around Valadie Len. See you later. As you like, miss. Uh, before we do that, we might actually want to look around here a little bit. Let's check where Momo was sitting. Oh, look, it's not raining anymore. Good to know for when we go outside. He threw some stuff on the floor when he left. Which we can't look at, but we can't pick it up. It seems to be a large cog wheel. Alright. There's another one. A medium cog wheel. See, there's nothing to look at. Other than the table, I guess this is where he was sitting. And there's two more cogwheels. This one does not fit in this... Uh, oh, no, wait, it does. It would go there. Um, hmm, there's one missing from the ones that are carved into the table. We now have the tiny cogwheel and the small cogwheel as well. 
I'm sure that will come in handy. This is an adventure game, after all. Nothing else here. And over here, the only other thing we can do is we can look um, at this. Which gives us um, some kind of a brochure, I guess, for this town, which can be helpful to read, I guess. Welcome to Valadilen, the world capital of mechanical toys. Let yourself be transported by the magnific magnificent landscape surrounding Valadilen, a small, charming town tucked away in the Alps and by Voral Work Manufacturing, whose exceptional savoir-faire in the specialized world of luxury mechanical toys and automatons is at the root of Valadilen's reputation around the world. Wait, if this is a French town in the Alps, why is this... are we talking about Hans and Anna Vorlberg? That does not sound French. They must not be locals here. Originally. But by looks of it a long time ago that they came here. Uh, for 800 years, the Vorlberg family has passed its knowledge from generation to generation, perfecting the art of that particular branch of clockmaking that breathes life into the complex network of cogs and spindles that make up automatons. Its creative wonders once defied belief and drew the admiration of young and old alike. People would come from across Europe for a chance to view, to, a chance to vie for the right to own one of these fantastic toys. Unequaled savoir-faire. At the heart of the mechanical automaton is its motor. A series of spindles are set in motion to music via a set of cogs. Attached to the spindles are cams that are shaped in the image of the music. In turn, they command a series of rods which control the gestures of the toy at their tips. Automaton construction takes place in three stages, modeling, mechanics, and casing. The process requires participation of 20 different specialized trades. In its heyday, the Vorlberg factory employed over a hundred craftsmen, mechanics, watchmakers, sculptors, tailors, and dressmakers, working in separate workshops. Vorlberg automatons all have two distinguishing features in common, their high-precision mechanisms and the characteristic Vorlberg wind-up key. Devising and assembling each model is a meticulous process. Standard toys are constructed from local wood, while the most sophisticated ones use more precious resources, such as ebony imported from Madagascar. I guess that this is a sample of that ebony, I suppose? I don't know wood, so I'm not sure. Despite competition from Asia, the Vorlbergs never gave in to the temptation to produce electrical robots, and chose to continue their exploration of the mysteries of perpetual mechanical motion. The Vorlbergs have come a long way from their simple jointed puppets of yesteryear. Today, their creations are so lifelike, one has the impression that they can think for themselves. The first signs of puppet manufacture in Valadilen go back to the 13th century. While there was maybe no definite puppet industry at the time, Hermann Vorlberg's renown was recognized even in the court of the emperor. Valadilenus, and that is um, 1200... 42, I think, even though that is not the usual way you would write 40. And I, my Latin is not good enough to translate this. I'm assuming these are the automatons from the archives of the Art and History Museum, Lausanne, Switzerland. The artisan H. Vorlberg and a servant presenting his puppets to the emperor. Which emperor? I am not sure. It was not until the 17th century that Charles Vorlberg founded the Vorlberg Mechanical Toy and Puppet Factory, and industrial activity in the valley really took off. The reputation of Valle de Lenne and its famous toys then just kept growing and growing. And there's another picture here, Charles Vorlberg with one of his creation. A large part of production was devoted to producing theatrical puppets at the time. The turn of the 20th century was Vela de Lens golden age as expressed in the factory's impressive architecture and the main houses of the town. 
The Vorlberg reputation crossed the oceans, dispatching its fine precision mechanisms across the globe to delighted buyers who began to believe that Vorlberg automatons had a life of their own. Rudolf Vorlberg managed the bus business during the glory years of the Vorlberg factory. Since the end of the Second World War, the destiny of the factory has been in the hands of Rudolf's da daughter, Anna Vorlberg, the last and sole descendant of the prestigious line of craftsmen. This inspiring figure negotiated the business for the end of the war. She breathed new life into production by creating works of art to appeal to experts and enthusiasts alike. Vorlberg automatons became rare collector's items with highly innovative mechanisms of unequaled ingeniousness even to this day. All right, some background on the factory. All of the documents you pick up, by the way, can be um, viewed here, where we can either read them again or use them like any other inventory item. So we have the brochure and two faxes. And with that, I believe it is time to head out into the town. Where it is, as we saw, fortunately, not raining anymore. And... This is the uh, automaton that greeted us, I guess. Standing above the uh, entrance. But we'll go and actually explore the town in the next video.